My name is Nora Duell, and um, I, I am here today to talk to you um, mostly about my husband, Thorne, and my son, William. Although I was a professional worker in my own right, I was a psychiatric social worker for the American Red Cross in New York and Chicago, but uh, I, uh, as I said, would, would prefer to talk about Thorne and, and William. Um, Thorne, uh, some of you may recognize the name Thorne Duell. He was the director of the Illinois State Museum and was pretty much responsible for uh, the museum being the institution that it is today. Um, he, uh, it was in 1938, he was working as an archeology span uh, research assistant at the University of Chicago when Governor Henry Horner appointed him as director of the Illinois State Museum. Um, but, but let me back up just a little bit um, to tell you about Thorne's education. He received his first uh, higher education at um, uh, the West Point University, uh, West Point Academy. Then he went on to Columbia University and then finally to the University of Chicago. He flew as an aviator in the Great War. Um, you know it today as World War I. Uh, at the time, we just called it the Great War. We didn't know that in 25 years uh, down the road, there'd be another huge war, World War II. So he flew, uh, he served mostly in uh, Mexico, and then he flew for the Flying Circus in 1919 and 1920. Uh, after that, he returned back to Chicago and, and worked uh, for the University of Chicago. He headed up the field, um, uh, for field surveys that they had of the Mississippi Valley and of the Atlantic coast. He also headed up the summer um, field explorations um, in, in the central states and in the eastern states. And during that work, um, he pr pretty much became familiar with all the museums in those states of the United States, which was great preparation be to be the director of the Illinois State Museum then. One of his first jobs was to uh, start an, a magazine that they called The Living Museum. Uh, he hired a woman named Virginia Eifert to be the editor. She was like perfect for the job. She was a naturalist. She was uh, a photographer, an editor, and a illustrator. There was no money for this uh, magazine or for her job, but she soldiered on anyway. She was really excited about the job. She got her first thousand subscribers by just picking them out of the local telephone directory. Uh, the first issue came out in May of 1939. It was a simple four page mimeographed pamphlet that she sent out. And, um, uh, and well, it was about Illinois birds, uh, beasts, and blossoms. People loved it, as I said. It, it continued for many decades, although it's not published today, which, which is kind of a shame, but uh, it was quite a success in its time. Uh, when, when Thorne was the director of the museum, he set up a, a herb, herbarium. He also had art shows, guided tours, lecture series. He also had a museum mobile that was like, it was a 36 foot long bus that contained 22 exhibits and he took and they took it all over the state of Illinois to show people what what kind of great exhibits the museum had. Uh, he uh, there, there was also a separate museum put up uh, at Second and South Grand that was a children's museum. Now in about 1942 after World War II broke out Thorne took a leave from the museum and he helped with the military effort in World War II. Uh, he served in China, Burma, and India, and uh, after that he came back to Springfield to face what was probably his biggest job in his life, which was to get a separate building built for the Illinois State Museum. Um, you, you know that the museum today is situated at uh, Spring and Edwards, um, but at the time, from about 18, 1938 onward to um, the 60s, 
all of the exhibits and, and uh, the artifacts were housed in the Centennial Building, which is uh, the Howlett Building, the Secretary of State's office. Well, they, they kept acquiring all these fabulous exhibits, and they were busting at the seams. They, they just needed a separate building to put all this stuff in. So Thorne kept pushing the politicians, and it, it gained some momentum in the, 196, in the 1950s. In the budget, finally, in 1959, uh, the, the director, uh, for William Stratton, had a line item, $2.6 million, finally, for the Illinois State Museum. They broke ground for the museum in about 1961. They completed it in 1963. Believe it or not, under budget, $2.1 million it cost them. Uh, Thorne also uh, originated what you probably know today as the Illinois Museum Society. That's the group that keeps promoting the museum. All of us can belong to that and do our part to uh, promote the museum also. Uh, Thorne uh, resigned in about 1962 from, from his, his job. Um, he uh, was very proud of his achievements, mostly for getting this building built, also for uh, uh, increasing the staff. When he started in, in 18, excuse me, 1938, there were six employees. When he resigned, there were 45 employees. And some of these employees were some of the best scholars in the nation who wanted to be part of the Illinois State Museum. Um, I, I, I'll transition a bit and talk a little bit about my son, William. He followed in his father's footsteps and was trained at the West Point. He served in Korea and later volunteered to help with the Vietnam uh, conflict war. He served in the Vietnamese Airborne, uh, Vietnam Airborne Division. Um, he, he, um, he, he wrote a letter to his wife. I, was, I would like to share just a few lines of that letter with you. And I hope when, I, when I'm finished, you'll understand why I wanted to share this with you. Uh, this is a proud mother speaking here. Uh, I took an oath to defend the Constitution at the price of my life, if necessary. I knew you realized this when you married me. Now on the battlefield and danger is close at hand, the fear of death clouds the mind. Fear is the greatest danger of all. If we are restricted by fear of what others think or of danger to our lives, then we are not carrying out our duty properly. I prefer to stand up and be counted. That's why I volunteered for this duty. I hope you believe in these things as urgently as I do without regard for personal fear and danger. It was just nine days after my son wrote this to his wife that he was bringing a t helicopter back from a Saigon uh, conflict that he was attacked by enemy fire and killed in, in that uh, encounter. He was brought back here to be buried with, with his family. Uh, it, it was a, um, uh, I, I think this is a wonderful letter, a tribute to a real patriot, and uh, it's a source of pride to a mother that she has raised such a, a wonderful son. I, I hope that in your future you go to the Illinois State Museum, that maybe uh, you are drawn back to the basement, to the auditorium, that you look above the door and you see the name of Thorn Duell. The good people at the Illinois State Museum, in their kindness, have named the auditorium in his honor, so, which is another source of pride. So we thank you for your kind attention, and, and thank you for coming today.